medical informatics in the scientific field that deals with the storage, retrieval, sharing, and optimal use of biomedical information, data, and knowledge for problem solving and decision making. In this session, we have two distinguished speakers, Professor Markus Gupta from Germany and Dr. Dean Morbach from New Zealand, who would share with us their knowledge and experience in integrated practice and AI in the IVF unit. The first speaker is Professor Markus Kopta, who is a professor and partner in one of the largest private IVF centers in Germany. In 1990, he was trained at the University of Bonn and Munich and awarded his PhD. In 2001, he finished a two years training in medical informatics at the Institute of Medical Biometrics, Informatics and Epidemiology in Bonn. And since 2002, he serves on the board and steering committee of the German IVF registry. And since, since 2008, he serves on the steering committee of the European IVF Monitoring Consortium of the ESHRE as chair, board member, and special advisor. Marcus published over 50 peer review articles, book chapters and textbook, and presented lectures extensively on reproductive medicine, the assisted reproductive technologies, infertility, outcome assessment, nationally and internationally. The topic of his presentation today is what you need to know about integrated practice in your IVF unit in order to coordinate hundreds of data points to improve your IVF success rate. So Marcus, please go ahead, the stage is yours. Thank you so much for this nice introduction, Zev. I would like to focus today on integrated practice. And uh, this uh, was given, uh, <clears throat> so I just informed myself what's behind that integrated practice. I found one book coming from 1946 uh, speaking about integrated practice of uh, practical medicine in England. Um, so I thought maybe this is not the right uh, focus and then I found another paper coming from the Netherlands uh, speaking about turning teams and pathways uh, in cancer treatment and they said okay integrated practice units are defined as organized around the patient and proving the full cycle of care for a medical condition, including patient education, engagement, and follow-up, and encompass inpatient, outpatient, and rehabilitative care, as well as supporting services. So from my point of view, full cycle of care, this is the focus. They um, analyzed some clinics and uh, spoke about multidisciplinary teams, providers function, responsibility, and measurement of outcome costs and processes. And this is what I would like to focus on. So measurement of outcomes, you know that uh, there's a local level, a regional, a national, and Europe, and maybe also a world level. So I'm really happy that I can work in all of these levels, um, even in ICMART. And it's very interesting to see how the data will be analyzed. So in the local area, we are speaking with um, three partners here about our results in our unit. Uh, we have six IVF centers here in Hamburg. So there's a meeting once a year, and we are speaking about uh, problems and success rates. We have two IVF registers in Germany, so both of them are publishing an annual report. And uh, the European EIM consortium, maybe you know all, is publishing um, uh, the annual report once a year, and also ICMART uh, with the world frame. ICMART is really, uh, it's a really a nice team, and all of them are really focusing on how can we uh, make the data readable for uh, all the colleagues. You know all these uh, charts about um, cycle, amounts of cycle in all, par all parts of the world. 
last year China came in, so this was a big thing for ICMART. On the European level, uh, we are analyzing a lot of Excel tables uh, before it's possible to write this annual report. So there's no uh, automatic mechanism behind. It's all done by hand. And then at the end, you will find these graphs indicating, for example, the amount of embryos transferred and so on. And what I like is also uh, you can get information about insemination uh, um, by the AM consortium. In Germany, we have two registers. One is founded by medical colleagues. Uh, you will find there all the details. You can find the details also in English on this website. And there's a governmental um, a register where you will get your information. Uh, for example, here, the ratio of IVF and ICSI. Our center is the dark blue one here, and you will find the rest here. Each column is one center in Germany. So you directly can find out, okay, so this is uh, the mean, it's 73% ICSI rate, and we are a little bit uh, above that. Um, 20 years ago, I published a paper uh, focusing on the development of electronic data collection uh, as a tool of quality assessment in our fields. So 20 years ago, this was all about how can the data of one IVF center can be transferred to the um, register. We found a very nice solution in Germany. So we have a server in each IVF unit called Artbox. And this server is uh, analyzing every cycle, if it's uh, plausible, if it's uh, um, able to be sent to the IVF uh, cloud. Also 20 years ago, um, I wrote a paper with a young guy who did his uh, thesis uh, about um, IT assisted business management. So we try to use a software, uh, the name is Income and the company is Promatis, the company is still existing. And this income software was used by automotive uh, production to analyze um, step by step the, the procedure of creating a car. Um, so we said maybe we also can do this in an IVF unit. Um, so there are so-called objective storage capacities where you can write down uh, some rules, how many time you will need, what kind of education the people would have to have, um, and what are the costs behind that. Um, so at the time, sorry, this is in German, we, we defini defined three levels. The couple is coming in, you are planning a treatment, you are doing the treatment, and then the couple will go away. And on the second level, what's in this uh, w what is the mechanism to find out the best um, uh, treatment and then to look in each treatment itself to see what's uh, behind that, how many people are working in. So um, I will make it a little bit shorter. So the couple is coming in, you are doing some di diagnostic, you are planning a therapy, you are doing a therapy and uh, you got a positive HCG test. So you are thinking about the pregnancy and then the couple will go away or the treatment will not be successful and then you will maybe plan another treatment or a more diagnostic, whatever. So at the end, you can fix all these points with um, ideas of costs, of uh, uh, people, um, of rooms you need for that. And at the end, uh, you will get a simulation. So you can define here, okay, this is a couple where an IVF treatment will be done and this will be successful after the second cycle or during the second cycle. And then this software will calculate every detail about the costs and the manpower and so on. So we found out that uh, at that time, I was at the University of Bonn, uh, we need two more medical doctors. Uh, so this was the result of implementing the software. 
but um, as you can expect, uh, the university said, oh no, it's not possible. You have to go ahead with uh, what you have and you will not get to more people. So in the moment, uh, we are using four different uh, IT tools in our unit. We are one of the biggest units here in Germany. Uh, we are doing all which is connected to money with this tool. We are doing our timing with this tool. Uh, all the lab analysis will be um, organized by this tool. And we are using Meditex for all the documentation for the cycles. And I will speak about this very nice tool. Uh, well, this is a screenshot. You will find all information for the woman on the left side, for the man on the right side. You will see all the cycles done already. Uh, and then you can see uh, clicking on one cycle what happened. So you can see the stimulation protocol. You can see the ultrasound results you can see the hormone values and what happened at the end so i like it because it's really easy to use and uh, when we are uh, teaching young colleagues they easily will find a way to use the software you will find um, seven different possibilities to run analysis with this software uh, one is the report editor so I used this report editor for getting uh, an idea about, about some key performance indicators. Key performance indicators um, are questions you will ask. You have to define what, what kind of data are interesting for you. You have to define what you will analyze uh, at the timeline for that, uh, what strategies you will find at the end to improve your results, and then you have to check if you got it. So this is, um, I'm, I'm Catholic, so I, I'm allowed to say that this is a, a holy trinity of uh, quality management. Uh, this is the analysis of structure, process, and results. So you need first to define the question, then you have to see uh, the, the way of how you are doing this, um, you have to look at the result and then you have to define, okay, what, what uh, had we learned about that? And then you directly will come to the question, what factors are responsible for having success? So from my personal point of view, this is first the size of your center. If it's a small center, then it's very hard to run analysis to do statistics. Uh, and then you are... Um, connected to a, to a lot of influencing factors, maybe one person will change and then the whole system uh, will be, um, ha had to be reorganized. What kind of patients are you treating? So we, for example, have a lot of patients, uh, older patients, meaning uh, 38 and older. What kind of technical equipment you have? So we are a PGD center, which is really rare in Germany. Uh, we can do everything we, we would like. We have a donor sperm bank in, in uh, here directly in the next house um, and so on. What is your competitive environment? So we have six other centers here in Hamburg and they all are fighting and they all would like to um, have a good um, impression to, for the patient. So you, you have to be aware of that. Um, are your colleagues up to date? What is the mission statement of the management? What, what is the aim? Is it to make the people happy? Is it to earn enough money? Is it to have the best, the best success rates? What is it? Uh, how many people are working in your lab? What is the motivation of your staff? Um, do you have enough money, for example, to buy new things uh, to implement them? And what is about the um, uh, legislation, the regional legislation? So in Germany, we have this very strict rule, the, the so-called embryo protection law, and we have to adapt to that. So um, I started with uh, what kind of questions would I 
um, asked my colleagues and uh, what 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 kind of answers would I would like to have. Um, so, for example, how many cycles are done per colleague? Um, who has the most invasive therapeutic strategy or even the least? Um, the colleague, who is the colleague with the lowest number of cycles until the pregnancy occurs? Um, what is the pregnancy rate per colleague? What is the number of oocytes per colleague? What is the overhyped stimulation syndrome quote per colleague? How often do we see fertilization failure per colleague? What is the correlation between the age of the doctor and the age of the woman? What is the, um, the colleague specific patient selection, I call it? So do, do they have an age limit? Do they have um, comorbidity acceptance um, problem? So, for example, we are treating a lot of patients with um, hepatitis C and HIV. Uh, HIV is not... Um, so, we have some colleagues denying to treat these people, only to give you one example. Um, uh, who's the colleague with the low, lowest uh, patient switching rates? Uh, what is the what are the grades in the rating portals in on the internet and at least uh, what is about the economic success um, so I use this Meditex uh, analysis tool uh, which is really nice to use you can fix a lot of items there um, and only to give you some ideas this is uh, how many follicular punctures are done by uh, each doctor. So we are seven doctors here. The time frame is three years. That means we, there are some doctors who already left and some new doctors. And I blended uh, the name. So you only will see a short part of the name. So this, this guy is uh, the guy with the most follicular punctures. And in the second step, we found out that he is doing not very much, um, not, not a high amount of inseminations. So all the other colleagues are doing a lot of insemination, but he is focusing on IVF. Um, what is the number of oocytes? So here, this lady is so successful. She has the most, uh, the, the, the highest average of oocytes. And we found out that he, she also, has the the youngest group of patients. Um, so what's about the duration of stimulation? This lady is doing a lot of stimulation for more than 20 days. So we had been really astonished about that. And there's another guy here doing a lot of very long stimulations. And uh, we found out that this is uh, these are two older colleagues, and they have older patients. So maybe this is the background for that. The cl clinical pregnancy rate. So as you can see here, um, it's really in the normal frame, but there's one colleague with a very high uh, success rate. And he's doing not only a few cycles, but he is selecting uh, the couples very well. So uh, the average age is something like two years less than the rest of the group. And we think that this is a mechanism because he is so successful. Um, Meditex also is offering another tool where you can choose each item um, out of the database. I think it's more than 200 items per cycle uh, in the database. So when you know the name of the field, you can select it. And at the end, you will get an Excel file where all your selected items are in. So this is really nice. And uh, I will give you some ideas, for example, about the duration of simulation. So I did some analysis about that. We found out that 11 days is the most common stimulation duration. Um, and uh, the second one is 10 days. So who is using which stimulation protocol? Most of us are using the antagonist protocol. And some 
colleagues are using still using the GNIH long protocol, and uh, the people with the GNIH long protocol are the older colleagues. So this two doctors here are older than 60. So they maybe are used to use this protocol uh, for 20 years now or even more. And the rest of the people, the rest of the younger colleagues are not using this protocol very often. So then we asked what about the pregnancy rates behind these protocols. And as you can see here, this is the GNH long protocol, a very high uh, pregnancy rate, but when you will look at the numbers, at the total numbers, it's only a small number of cycles, 38 out of 3,000, um, with this long protocol and this very high success rate. Um, and here, it's a little bit the same thing. This is the success rate in antagonist protocols, nearly 50%, but this is also a very small number. So the most common success rate is something like 35%. Um, so I also asked the pregnancy rate in the first cycle. And we found out that our unit, our unit is working really similar at this point. So the pregnancy rate in the first cycle is something like 25%. Um, only two guys are a little bit more successful, but as you can see here, uh, they are using, they, they are doing not a lot of cycles. So they are maybe selecting uh, the, the people a little bit in more detail. And the last thing I would, would like to show is, um, my question was, what is the correlation between the amount of the first interview with the couples and the amount of IVF cycles. This will not mean that I'm convinced that it is necessary to do a lot of IVF cycles for each couple coming in. But as you can see, uh, there's a huge difference in the amount of first interviews. So each bar is, uh, each column is one sorry, each bar is uh, one doctor and uh, you can see the amount of um, first interviews in one year. So he is really busy and she is only working for 50%. That's why she only did half of, this, of these interviews. And then I looked up uh, the amount of IVF ICSI cycles and then I found at the end, okay, most of us are doing the, the the quote is 6.4, 6.5, comparing IVF ICSI treatments to the monitoring, um, uh, to, to the uh, first interviews. And there are two other colleagues, uh, and they are only doing some IVF ICSI cycles. So they are doing a lot of insemination treatments. So they don't they don't like to directly get to ART. So um, to come to an end, what do you need to know about integrated practice? You have to have the courage to recognize the problems in your own unit. So if you are not willing to put the finger on the wound and say, okay, this is where we can get better, then don't start with that. Um, you have to define the right questions. So um, as you remember, I had a lot of questions at the end, at the beginning, but I learned that it's not possible to answer each question. Um, you need to know how to use your electronic tools. So you have to be safe in using the, the um, IT solutions. And it's very easy to do this with Meditex. So I like the, the, the software very much. You have to convince all employees that things can get better. So when you will publish a list, who is, do, who is having the best success rates, who is doing the embryo transfer in the best way, uh, who has, the, has the, the highest amount of oocytes, then you have to be aware of the fact that Maybe you will blame some colleague. Maybe someone will be angry with you. 
maybe someone will have a lot of arguments indicating that this is not the truth and so on and so on and so on. Really exciting correlations are often difficult to analyze. So maybe on the way to answer some questions, you will find answers for other questions. And you, you do not have to be surprised by, for example, detecting that uh, there are colleagues where the people would like to go and there are colleagues where the couples will not come in again. So you also have to be aware of the fact that each analysis um, has to has to be reflected again what what mechanism can be behind that so for example the highest rate of of ICSI treatment i'm not convinced that it, it it's a must to say uh you have to have a very high ICSI rate no from my point of view it's, it's it's just the opposite when you are able to detect where you can do ivf with a good success rate then maybe you are a real good uh colleague and the last point, meaningful analysis only makes sense with a corresponding large amount of data. It doesn't make sense to analyze the success rate of one month or two weeks or whatever. Um, you have to use maybe a time frame of two or three years. You have to have high numbers to be sure that um, this analysis can be done in the right way. Thank you. Markus, thank you very much. It was not only interesting, it was also very important uh, for all of us to understand uh, what does it mean uh, collecting these points and analyzing it to improve our fertility uh, care. And I want to ask you a few questions, but I, I would like you maybe you a little bit elaborate more. What kind of tools are necessary in order to uh, get this data and analyze it? Well, um, from my point of view, you need someone who is able to combine the medical part with the colleagues and the lab part with the biologists. So you directly will find a lot of questions and answers looking only at the lab um, issues. Um, well, therefore, we found out that, that it's a good combination, that it's very good to have one, one people coming from the lab and one coming from the medical part, and they both will think about these questions and the answers and the problems behind that. You also need some skills for using the computer programs. So if you do not know how, for example, to create a PIVO, table in excel then you are lost you have to know some details about statistics and um at, at the end the most important thing is that um you, you you have to speak a lot with with the companies where your software is from to get more ideas what or more ideas what this software is able to do so we found out for example speaking with uh, Michael Schindler from Cretex, uh, he, he's uh, selling Meditex, and, and we found out a lot of possibilities in this uh, software tools, uh, and they are not in the textbook, or maybe they are in the textbook, but you, you will not read it directly, or you will not understand it directly. So call them, ask them, is it possible to do this and this, this, and this analysis? And sometimes you will be lucky that you can combine two software solutions. Um, I showed this uh, combination about the um, first interview, um, the, the, the timer we are using and Meditech. So at the end, we put all the information in one Excel file and then we had been able to run our analysis. So it's obvious that you need continuous support from the company yeah. that actually produce this kind of software. So this is one of the waiting things that you need to take care about. But I want to ask you something else. On a daily basis, we are clinician and we have a laboratory. 
how do you use the data that you are collecting? For example, if you have a patient who failed the treatment, how is there any use of the data you are collecting to look at you know next treatment cycle? What should you do? Uh, how to analyze the failure of this cycle in order to improve the next one? I think this is also very important. If you can elaborate about this a little bit more. Yes, sure. Um... Well, the software MediTeks is able to give you a very detailed information, uh, even, even up to the blastocyst stage quality assessment, uh, even the last sperm count in detail, um, it's possible to put it in there. Um, but you have to um, fix the policy where, where, for example, the lab people are uh, asked to put in each detail what is frozen um what what maybe um what was the the quality of the donor sperm sample you used whatever um we learned that it's depending on people so we we had a, an old lab chief and a new one and uh if you are not used to use a software tool for each step, then you have to convince the people that they will get rid of the paper thing. They have to put in the system all information in the digital way. And the second thing in the situation of counseling patients, it's very easy to get an overview um, about the last cycle or maybe about the last two or three cycles. And um, we are using this software also for internal statistics. So we are not allowed in Germany to publish our IVF unit results uh, on, the, on, on the internet, um, like in the US, for example. We are not allowed to. This would be um, like a commercial advertising. So, but for for the use in our unit, we can say, okay, look at this statistics. Uh, when the woman is uh, 43, these are our results. You can have a very open-minded picture of our possibilities. Um, and then maybe I also will demonstrate what is the average number in Germany. Um, so also for that, the software is really helpful to get an idea what's about your success rate. I'm using this once a week to check if it's okay or not. The fertilization rate, uh, what, what's about the uh, survival rate of the thought um, embryos and so on. So it's very easy to do this. And when I find a problem, I can go to the lab chief and ask him, what's behind that and this also is good for him because he knows um, some other people are also looking at my data so i have to be honest with all the details uh, which are put in the system and this is the the most important movement in using such a software that the people will understand okay my work will be like a mirror in there so it's clear who did this and it's clear um did it in the right had i done it in the right way or not and um at the beginning people are afraid of that they don't like to be analyzed like this but after one year or so, you, you, you will get the feeling, okay, we can um, fix the things in a very fast way to make the results better. No, we used another culture medium and this is not working well and everyone can see that. So we will go back to the old one, for example. No. We used a new embryo catheter, a transfer catheter, and it's not working well and we can see it directly in our statistics. So this is great. Marcus, I want again to thank you very much. We have to stop here, unfortunately, but it was extremely interesting and important. So thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you.